we've got us a fun project to work on in the shop tonight. This is something that uh, I brought home from work and volunteered to do here so that I could make a good video project out of it and uh, bring you guys along the way and show, show you how I'm going to uh, do this job. So what we have is uh, we have a broken casting, this piece right here out of a gearbox. This was an accidental breakage at work. Uh, it just it got broken, damaged, and you got a chunk that broke off there, and then a chunk that got broke off there. By the way, I had glued them on with this uh, Loctite. That I had to pick this up down the road, and went ahead and just glued them back on. And this stuff works pretty good, just Loctite super glue. So, what I decided to do was to contact my friend Clark Easterling of Windy Hill Foundry. Uh, you met him in the Soleil. Soleil Steam Feedworks Museum video. He's in that video. So I contacted Clark and asked him, could he cast this piece for me? And he says, yes, yeah, so send it on. So that's what we did. I had taken this casting, glued it back together, and I filled all the holes with water putty, and I filled this area here. Also, the, there's a bearing that fits here, and there's a seal that fits here. I filled that area with water putty so that whenever he casts it, I would actually have material that I could machine out because if you cast it like that, it just it wouldn't I wouldn't be able to machine it. So this is what it looked like, you know, with the putty in there. And of course, I had all the holes filled up. So Clark did a great job casting this thing. He he got on it right away for me. I sent it to him next day air, and uh, he he started working on it the next night and had it back to me within a couple of days. So this is just a. It's an accident, and it's a part that we've got to replace. And you know, so I volunteered to uh, make this, and I uh, wanted to share you share it with you guys. This is the casting off of the other side of the gearbox. I mean, it's identical to this, only it's just a cap. Okay, it doesn't have a through hole like this one right here does. But what I intended to do was use this one to get a really good hole pattern on this piece right here, since this one is is on size, it's not broken. We can use this hole pattern. The top of the holes were a little bit flared in just from being torqued down, so I ran a 14 millimeter drill through those to kind of open those up. And I'm gonna use this to transfer the hole pattern onto the new casted piece right there. I was gonna use this one right here, but since I had that one, I just decided to use this one instead. So we will need to drill the holes in it and then we're going to use the lathe. We're going to face it and then get all this uh, counterbore done there. And you can see that there's a, there's a counterbore. This is for the bearing race. This is a slit fit for the bearing race. And then there's an oil seal that goes there. I've actually got the uh, component parts right here. So we got a new Harwall oil seal that is going to fit there. And this is a 50 millimeter by 65 millimeter by 10 millimeter oil seal. What are those millimeter? Um, so this is the bearing right here. So this will be is what's going to fit this this guy. This is a Temkin, and that's where it's going to fit, just like so. And this will actually need to be have like a, a half to one thousandth slip fit on this. And what it does is it holds that it holds that race down. All right. I decided to use the sample and we're going to line up on each one of those holes because uh, as I was transfer punch, I noticed it was shifting just a little bit and I want those holes to be exactly in line with those so that I can use three bolt through bolts later and hold the two castings together. So we're using a fixture plate. We got two clamps and what we're doing is that we're clamping down on the three points of contact here on the fixture plate. So we've got a solid mounting point here and here. And also on this side with the uh, with the uh, C clamp style, holding that one right there. So we'll indicate the hole and then drill it. We're gonna put us a fresh grind on that 14 millimeter drill bit.
Looks like that'll work. Center point to get us close. I'm going to call that close enough. I'm going to use my new Cleline short link drill right here. This is a screw machine link drill. And we're going to use that to spot it and create a nice round divot for our 14 millimeter drill to follow in, okay? Well, I didn't expect that, so we've got a hard spot there on the face. I'm going to use this half-inch carbide straight flute drill instead and see how this does. I know this will cut it. It's starting to dull my new drill right there, but it's definitely got a hard spot there. Definitely wasn't expecting what I run into there. I've got hard spots on each side of the casting there, so I'm glad I got this carbide, and I hope that I don't mess it up because I'm going to have to use this probably to drill all of them there. To when it got to the other side, the bottom there, which would be the top of it, you know, it started chattering a little bit there too, just because you run into a tough spot of the cast. So I don't know how my uh, regular high speed is going to do to open this up to 14 mil, but I'm going to have to give it a shot and see if it'll do it. Yeah. Man, God almighty, it's hard. I knew it was going to destroy that drill. I was just trying to get through it, though. It's got the cutting edge there. Let's see if I can just make it go through there. All right, well, I made it go through there. It's not, it's not pretty. I mean, it dulled the corner of the drill bit there, but we got it. Let me see if a bolt will go through there. I don't understand it. All right, see, we got our bolt that will go through there. And that's how I want to be able to use this, is uh, to build a bolt, put the uh, two pieces together later on when I'm working on the machining. So, all right, well, one down. Let's go ahead and try to do some more. Now that one did not seem hard right there. What I'm doing instead of pulling it all the way through by hand, I'm going to raise the knee up. A lot less likely to snap that drill bit. Alright, a little bit hard on the bottom side.
just had our first casualty of the job, and I'm not happy about it right now. I'm very, very frustrated and upset about this. Broke the side out trying to drill this hole right here. It's just so hard. It's putting so much pressure on it, and it's a thin wall right there. So as I was drilling it, it just, it just broke it out of there. So I'm going to attempt to save it by brazing it back up. I'm going to go ahead and finish that hole. I want to finish these two holes here. Go ahead and get these drilled. And what we'll do is I'll just braze this back up, build this up, and then set it back up again. And, and then once we line up those other holes, we'll drill this. But I want to go ahead and get these two in case I have the same problem and these get busted out as well. So I think that's what I'm going to do versus trying to uh, go through all this again, getting another one made or having to cut it out of a different piece of material. So let's just keep moving forward with it and see if we can get these other ones done. Working the X, Y axis to uh, gotta get that thing lined up. If I would have had this drill right here in, in a 14 millimeter size, this would have gone a lot smoother would have easily cut that like this did but I've only got these in a few sizes and I have them in standard sizes I don't have any of these in metric sizes so I didn't expect these problems with this thought it was going to be a pretty smooth transaction I suppose those will work. They're going to have some washers on the on the heads of the bolts right there. So you got a there's a chip spot there on that one and on this one right here. So that's the one right there that we need to we need to see about adding some metal there. So we're ready to go ahead and start getting this thing preheated, and we're going to do a braze repair on this. Hopefully, we're going to fill this area up. What I've done is uh, made an aluminum plug to fill the hole there. The, the hole is good, it's on size, so we're just going to try to build over that and then hopefully if that works out good, we'll just dress it. So I would have liked to use some carbon to make this, but I didn't have any, so I used this piece of aluminum. All right, I spoke to Clark about the, uh, the hard issues on the outside and what he had told me was we were trying to get this turned around really fast. So as soon as he got it, he cast it that night and then pulled it out and then... Um, and then sent it back to me the next morning. And he says that generally these kind of castings like this, especially when you're machining it, they need to set and soak in the mold for about 24 hours so that they don't, um, they don't get hard on the outside like that. So that's, that's what he believes the problem is, is that we pulled it fast and it, it may need to be annealed also. So what I plan to do is uh, I want to get this thing warmed up nice and hot. We'll do our repair and I want to make sure it's nice and warm again. And we're going to we're going to wrap it up. I've got our fiberglass blanket right here. I'm using these insulating tiles right here. These were given to me by Dennis Nolan over at Niagara Cutter. This is the material that they use to make the tiles for the space shuttle right there. So we'll leave them on there. I've got some more insulating tiles right here that somebody else had given me that will uh, will dam this thing up real good, wrap it up, and just let it sit overnight and hopefully cool down slowly. And maybe that'll help anneal it a little bit because I'd still need to come in here and machine this. I got to face the outside and I'm just concerned about it being tough for me to, to machine. So let's go ahead and uh, get it going, all right?
I think that's going to be a good preheat. We'll go ahead and move to the vise and start our braise.
All right, well, the, uh, the aluminum plug was a complete embarrassment there. I wasn't thinking about that melting away on me. And I just, since it was already hot, I just wanted to go ahead and go with it. So I'll just, I'll just do some grinding and dressing and then drill that aluminum back out of there. That's the best thing, best thing for me. I didn't want to stop with the part getting cool there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go back to the, the fire brick there and go ahead and do another heat on it. Tell you what I'll try. I'll go ahead and see if I can melt it out of there since it's sitting. We'll just, we'll just try to melt it out of there. I think we're pretty good. I was shooting for about 800. It's hot. I don't know how accurate it is. it is. It's not a reflective surface surface there, so looks like we're right at a. It said a thousand a second ago. All right, we're gonna roll with it right there. Try to just dam it up a little bit. Now I'm gonna stay out here for a, a while and you know monitor this and make sure we don't have any kind of casually a flare up or something like that, you know. Get it wrapped up good. By the way, one of my viewers who uh wished to remain anonymous had uh recently given me this new fire blanket here. A welding blanket it's a fiberglass blanket so you can use it for welding and whatever you want that's amazing i don't even as hot as that is i barely feel any heat coming off that right there so i think we got it wrapped up good i mean it's look at that 68 Fahrenheit. <laughs> Those insulating tiles are working really good.
All right, I wanted to show you this right here. I've been playing around with the setup. This is how I planned on uh, facing this thing off and putting the bore in it right there was in the lathe. All right, so I already knew I was going to have to flip this jaw around to be able to, for the jaw to be able to clear. But the problem is, is that because of the way this thing is casted with all this meat on the back side there, in order for this jaw to catch here, it's going to push this part of the casting too far away from that edge for me to be able to chuck it with these jaws. Right now we're kind of at an angle. All right, so this is sticking out further than what it is right there. And this right here is a prime example of why I need and why I want a large swing lathe in the shop. Jobs like this, those large swing lathes make this so much easier. You got a big chuck and you got all that room to be able to chuck something odd like this. And 16 inch swing lathe just can't handle it all. So, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this in, take this back into work, and we're going to finish this out on the American Pacemaker. I've got a lot larger chuck on that thing, a lot more swing. I'll be able to easily chuck this and hold it and be able to get this thing faced out. So, I planned on facing it, do our counter bore, our bore for the seal, all that in one setup. And then uh, other than that, I got two holes to still drill right there for the oil, which I was gonna I was gonna take care of that later. So I'll uh, I'll see you guys over on the pacemaker.